In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about using webinar objects. So if you want to add a webinar into your marketing funnel, which is very, very popular now, and a lot of people have webinars, I'm going to explain to you how basically to build that model and things that you actually need to keep in mind. So what you see here is I have a very basic model, have traffic coming into a webinar registration page, and then from the webinar registration page, they would see a thank you page, and then three days later, they would get an email, and then the email goes to the event, whether it's a live event, or you could replace this with a replay. And then they would come to a sales page. This is the offer page that's promoted inside the webinar if you're going to have an offer page. Uh, you can actually structure a, like a webinar event that doesn't have one. And I'll show you the call to action setting inside the webinar live object here. And then, of course, we have an order form connected to the sales page or offer page. Uh, because you know we have to set how many people would actually check out and purchase once they reach the order form. And of course, you can leave it on 100%, which just would represent that everyone that clicked over to the order form to buy, whatever the sales conversion was set for the sales page, complete the order. But if you put it at less, which is more like cart abandonment, then you could build other things off of it, like we've covered in other tutorials where you can do cart abandonment sequences and things like that, retargeting, whatever. But this webinar registration flow right here, there's something I have to point out to you just to understand the flow. So we'd have a percentage for what percent of the traffic coming to the webinar registration page would actually register for the webinar. Right now, everything's on zeros. But if we put this at 50%, it means 50% of visitors register for the webinar. If you put a 10%, you get it. 10% of people would register. And so they'd be shown a thank you page. And then three days later, they would get this email. And then that email would link to the webinar event. That's a little bit different if you're doing a live webinar that's on a specific date, then you wouldn't have this automated three days later after the registration because you know what if it's more than three days before the event or it's less than three days before the event, um, then the email obviously doesn't make sense. So this would just be a broadcast that would go out you know, right before uh, the webinar would happen. So the thing you have to understand here, which I covered in the previous logic flow and email messages tutorial, if you haven't seen that, you may want to go watch that before you watch this entire tutorial and webinars. Because the logic you have to understand is the number of registrants are like opt-ins. When they get to this point, they're all receiving this email. Your attendance rate for your webinar, whether it's webinar live or replay or recording, is based on how many people would click the link in this email to, in this case, go to this webinar live object. It's just like I explained with the logic flow and the call to action in emails. So for example, if you set this to 10%, and this is an email that says, hey, we're going live, and 10% of people click that link, well, then you'd basically have 10% of people end up showing up to this webinar event. That's how the logic would work. But it also means, in this example, that 90% of the people that did not click on the link to go over to the webinar object or the event didn't attend. So your attendance rate or your pseudo attendance rate would be 10% in this example if you set that one email link to 10%. Now, obviously webinar registration, if you give out you know the URL or the event code or whatever else, let's say on a thank you page, as soon as they register, you say, you know, bookmark this page or, or save this link, you're gonna need it on Thursday when we have the live webinar. We can't account for those people in this type of a model of how many people hypothetically would have bookmarked that link and then go to it. So in the future, we may modify Gira where we have kind of an attendance setting where you can change that to represent whatever the attendee rate would be, what percentage of registrations would attend. Uh, but the way you do that right now is through the numbers that would just click emails uh, that would go to the event. So you could have multiple emails in this sequence and all the yes paths could go to this event. And then that's just basically how the attendance would be calculated. All the yeses end up attending the event because they click those links in the emails to go to the event. So that's kind of how you would calculate that. But don't forget, just like I mentioned again in that previous logic flow tutorial, you can't forget about the nose. If you set this to 10% and this is the only email you have linking, for example, to your webinar object, 
your attendee rate won't be any more than the 10% number of the number of registrants because that's the only flow here going to this event. Now, when we get to the event itself, whether it's a live webinar, whether it's a recorded webinar, and it's just a replay, inside the webinar object, you're going to see this call to action percentage. This would mean if you promote something inside the webinar, it doesn't need to be a product for sale. For example, you may want people just to go from the webinar to fill out a survey. You're not even trying to get them to go to a page to buy a product. Maybe your webinar demo or whatever it is that you talked about in the webinar is just trying to get them at the end as a call to action to go fill out a survey. Or maybe it's to go get them to fill out an application form for some kind of high-end coaching. Or it's just to get them to go fill out another type of opt-in page. Or maybe even to register for a second webinar. Well, whatever that would be, your call to action percentage on the webinar event itself it's just how many people would click to go over to that next step, to go and take that, uh, whatever it is that you're trying to get them to do. So the call to action here is just clicking the link to go visit the page that then tries to get them to do whatever it is you're trying to get them to do. So if you set this to 25%, that means 25% of your webinar attendees would end up going to whatever page it is next that you want them to go to. So if you set this to 25%, and in this model, our call to action goes to a sales page, that means 25% of however many attended here end up on the sales page. So if you're gonna have a buy rate, let's say, that you wanna represent in this model of 25% of attendees, well then you would set the sales page conversion rate here at 100%. You would just say 100% of those that end up on this offer page buy if that was based on 25% clicking over to it uh, from your event page itself. Now, if you, let's say, know your metrics of how many people go look at your offer page as a percentage of your attendees but don't necessarily all buy, well, then you can put that in here for your call to action. You could put you know, 30% of the attendees go look at the offer page, but only then, you know, half of those end up ordering. You can put that in here. So you could put 30 as your call to action that click the link to go to the offer page. And then you could change the sales conversion here uh, to another 30 or 25 or however many you're saying of the people that see the offer page end up ordering. And then ultimately they land on the order form and that's how many complete the cart and don't abandon it. But that's how you do webinar setups inside of Giru. So for your attendee number, it's based on how many click from emails that you send out and end up on either the webinar live object or the replay or recording. So we have the two objects that represent webinars, webinar live and webinar replay. Replay is also the same as a recorded event. It acts the same way. So if you did have this model here and then like three days later, Let's say after all the people that didn't buy, we could take, come off the no here. We could come off the no here because these are the people that didn't even click over to the offer page. These are the people that didn't say, I will buy from the offer page to go to the order form. We could run both of these no's over to an email sequence that goes out three days later that tries to send them to the replay to get them to watch it again or even to send them back to the offer page. We could do all kinds of stuff just like you can with real direct marketing. But we can also send all the no's off of our emails that didn't attend. Let's say like three days later, they'd get an email or one day later and they'd say, oh, you missed the live event. Here's a link to the replay. And so you could have this end path going to a one day wait and then an email that then links to a webinar replay. So that's how you would do that.